We have talked about kinetic energy, the energy of motion. We've talked about work, how you give something energy or take energy away. And now we have potential energy. So my simple definition is when you do work to store energy due to position. So the two interesting aspects of this are store, it's a way to hold on to energy, sort of. And the position, I could say arrangement would be more general, but for now we'll think about how it's the position of something that matters. So we're going to demonstrate it and think about it with this simple setup here. It's just a uh, rod with a little board. right? And down here I have a mass, M, and what we'll call position A. And all I'm going to do is bring it up here to position B. Let's think about what happens if I do that. So here's the mass, and I lift it. Oh, it's so heavy, I can barely make it move. And let's think, what force am I applying to lift it? I'm applying mg. Now, I must be applying a little bit more than mg because it's moving up. But the way you can think about it is I'm moving it up at a constant velocity, a very slow velocity. The amount of acceleration it took to reach this velocity is essentially nothing. So basically, I had to exceed mg for just a teeny brief flash of time. But I'm basically applying a force mg. So that's why we say when we do some move like this, uh, that when we lifted it up there, we were just applying the force mg. Okay, so I applied that force and I brought it up to this level. So that's sort of the displacement, right? We could call that delta y, put a vector on it, it's a displacement. And the force I applied, fp, the push force, is equal to mg. Technically, it had to be slightly more just for a brief instant to get initial velocity going. But during this whole path, it was only fp, and fp is equal to mg. So let's see. The work to get the mass here um, is work equals, and then f dot d is displacement, right? So displacement vector is this way. The force is this way. It has the magnitude mg, so it's mg times delta y. mg delta y. It's positive because I pushed, and um, the displacement's in the same direction. Okay. So now it's at b. And at b, it doesn't have any kinetic energy. Right? But it has something, because what if I do this? It picked up quite a bit of kinetic energy, right? When it hit the table, it had a lot of kinetic energy. So you could also say at B, position B, um, it might fall. Right? It has the potential to gain kinetic energy. Like if someone pushes it off. due to its position. Or another way to say that is it has potential energy. So you might be able to see now in my definition these two aspects. It's the position that gave it the potential energy. We pushed it up to this high, high level, and when it fell, it could get its kinetic, it could convert it to kinetic, and it was storing it because while it was sitting up there, it was holding on to this potential energy, which it gave up as it fell. So if we're going to write the potential energy, in this case where the uh, work was done against gravity, we could call it U subscript G. So we'll use that to mean gravitational potential energy. And this also is when you're near the Earth. We'll say it's equal to MGY. Right? MGY, if it's equal to zero, at y equals zero. Potential energy is one of these values that's always a change. It's always a difference. Its value depends on what you consider zero. That's why I contrast it to kinetic, where I said kinetic was absolute. Kinetic energy is one of mv squared. It doesn't matter where the origin is. Potential really depends on where the origin is. So in this example, we put the origin here at the table, and we said it builds up some potential energy, mg times this distance, difference in height. 
But in the demo, you saw we could define another origin down here on the floor, right? The weight actually fell even lower. So you could call that zero, and you get a different potential. But the potential differences are always the same. It always depends on the difference between two heights.